So today we're going to have a look at Jet2 and JD Sports. Both of them did a trading update today and both making very big different moves on the stock market chart. So uh, I own them both and we'll take a look at them both. Just before we do, the Black Friday deal does run out on the 1st of December. So if you do want to join the private group with over 100 exclusive videos in 2025 for you guys on there, it is £44 for the full year something like £3.40 for the full month, which isn't that bad at all. You support the channel, I give you two exclusive videos back for it, and also you get to know my live buy and sell alerts, and also a community of JKR watchers to talk about stocks, including me. Send me an email if you do want to join that, jkrinvesting at gmail.com. But let's get stuck on today's video. So we're going to talk about JD, and obviously we're going to talk about Jet2, which I cannot find the tab for. We're going to talk about Jet2 as well. JD making the downwards move, uh, Jet2 making the ups upwards move, which is uh, the right move for an airline. Um, but J JD Sports, we'll start with this one because I think this is the reason why a lot of you will come and click on this video. JD Sports, um, a stock that I've owned for a long time. I've owned JD St Sports now for around about four years. Started buying during the, the coronavirus times. Uh, did very well for me. Stock I was up over 100% on. I remember taking some profit off the table. Uh, then it crashed massively during 2022 when we had that horrible stock market. Um, obviously, Liz Trust came in as well. That just uh, topped it off. Started rolling back out again here. Um, and then it's uh, fallen back down. Looked like it was rolling back up again in uh, the September. And now it's fallen off a cliff again. Down 35% within uh, one month, which is a you know, this is getting a bit of a roller coaster stock when you do look at this. Uh, some of these moves that are happening in uh, JD Sports, but yeah, big fall off the cliff as you can see here, down 35%. Um, to be honest with you, it was already downtrending before the earnings today. If we just zoom out a little bit, really since like this September time, the stock's been falling about 26%. Not really any news why, unless clearly they had maybe a look at earnings. Maybe um, I I would say probably it's concerns around the the new uh, UK government and the NI costs. Uh, as we've seen any kind of company with high employees and having to pay a lot of NI, a lot of them are taking hits. So I'd put it probably down to that. And then the drop off today is that people didn't like the trading update today that came out from JD Sports. The headline that a lot of people were going with was uh, JD Sports slump 14% after profit warning. And I looked at the thought, well, it's not really a profit warning. <laughs> you know, the, these, I looked at the earnings and went, uh, they could have been better, but I thought the stock would be down about 5% today. I did not think the stock would actually go down 15% uh, today. Uh, you know, the fact that this stock is heading back down to its lows that it was in the Liz Trust time, uh, the fact that this stock is heading towards where it was in the, the lows of the coronavirus times, it probably shouldn't be here. You know, when you consider the valuation of this stock and how, you know, high quality this stock is, I don't think it should be down here. And the headline today of like, Oh, it's a profit warning. I don't really agree with that because the the numbers they guided for were in the guidance. The, all, all they said is it was at the lower end of the guidance. So if they're hitting the guidance, it's just at the lower end. That's not a profit warning. They're just telling you that's where they're, they're in the guidance. It's just at the lower end of it. Profit warning is where you go, actually, with the profit we told you we're going to do, it's going to be nowhere near. That's, the, that's a profit warning. So yeah, not sure what's going on here anyway, but Let's have a look at it and then we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. So after a good start to the period helped by strong back to school sales, we saw increased trading volatility in October. Now the key thing about October that I point to is that um, they point this to the North America and the UK. Maybe the volatility in America was the US election and we know many times before that can make people a little bit nervous about where potentially uh, the economy is going and we see sometimes a little bit of nervous, nervousness and sales. So maybe that's maybe election related. And then as well, the UK, same again, maybe a little bit nervous around the new government, obviously the budget that was kind of coming in. So maybe that was the kind of key drivers of maybe why the stock hasn't performed that well. But they did say that it was down to more promotions, uh, which I can't actually see where it was, but they said that it was towards promotions and also that there was warmer weather as well, which to be fair in the UK, it wasn't too bad of an October. So that's what they kind of put it down to. But if you do look at coming here, they said that organic sales were still 5.4%, which is obviously really good. And year to date sales are still 6.1% as well. Life, life sales were down slightly, 0.3%. So we want to see that a little bit more positive. So that's a little bit more negative, but nothing terrible. You know, we're not, we're not seeing 
three, four percent here. And as the stalls open up, that's helping the growth as we as we're clearly seeing here. And let's not forget, uh, a like like for light sales on year to date is still positive, zero point five percent. So yeah, I mean the numbers were like not great for this quarter, but they're still very good for the year, and it wasn't a, a terrible um, you know October. As they opened up with all this information here, I thought, oh here we go. This is a, when you see this information here, and they start talking about how well they're doing so far this year. I thought there's going to be a but. <laughs> there's going to be a but. It hasn't been that great recently, and I thought let's. When I read it, I, I straight went down to the bottom bar paragraph because they're going to say something here. And uh, when I read it the first time round, I thought, oh, here we go. They did do a bit of a change in the guidance. So they said, following the October, we are now expecting profit before tax to be in the lower end of our original guidance of ninety five. Uh, 955 million to 1.035 billion so yeah overall like it's still in the guidance it's just at the lower end so what you're going to be 30 30 million off where you wanted it to be it's nothing crazy guys like it's yeah obviously you'd want it to be maybe towards the midpoint that they guided for but it's nothing to kind of get you know upset about really and i looked at you know they also talked about the currency impact and said that that was around about 15 million hit as well so and that's something that they guided for and it was a little bit worse than what they were expecting so realistically you know they're what 20 20 million ish off the, the midpoint here i don't know why the stock market is getting upset about this <laughs> i don't understand why the stock market is getting upset by you know the guidance maybe being 20 million lower if you account for fx impacts 20 million lower than where they were planning for it's not really a profit war warning it's nothing to get you know you shouldn't really see stocks falling um what it did today 15 percent off a 20 million little bit of a miss on the midpoint of the guidance it's 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 ridiculous and the fact that we're talking about a stock here that is now uh, you know you got to put the valuation into context like this is the lows that it's been it, since october it's the lows that it's been since covid and you know the, the, the same sort of value when we saw the panic of you know all the kind of stocks that were uh, so all the shops that were you know completely stocks because they stock so much uh, you know all the shops that were shut down you know you look at the midpoint here when there's so much fear around the um, uk economy during that time frame um, and yet we're down at these sort of levels and you know when, when you start looking at jd sports as well it's a company that's executed so well you know even during this period where it's weak for jd sports they're still growing at like six percent and you've also got to consider this is like seven times earnings. Like this company normally trades like at 20 times earnings. Now seven times forward earnings. Right now it's nine times earnings. You come back to like so Foot Locker, for example, that's that's 14 times earnings, but yet Foot Locker is only growing 1%. So JD Sports is growing six times Foot Locker. Oh, I guess if you do, is it 1.9%? I guess it's let's just round it up to 2%. So the they're, they're growing three times as fast as Foot Locker and growing the, the profitability a lot more than Foot Locker. But yet, Foot Locker's valued a lot more than JD Sports. You look at Nike. Sure, Nike's got the branding power. Nike's 21 times earnings, but yet Nike is going down 10% in this environment. So it shows you that this is a, it's a complete weak environment out there as well. That's probably worth pointing out that it is a weak environment out there. You know, all these other companies are kind of struggling here. But Nike's going down 10% a year in revenue, but yet this is still being valued at 21 times earnings and JD Sports is down at seven forward times earnings. And then you look at JD Sports as well, and you look at the past performance of this business here. You know, if you want to see a company that's executed really well, just look at this growth on the revenue here. Look at 2020. You know, when we looked at when that share price was, you know, back at them sort of levels during that peak fear, 5.8 billion in revenue. Now 10.7 billion in revenue. You look at profitability, uh, 258 million profitability, uh, 342 million profitability, and that's obviously as well with some impacts in. You know, when we look at what this year is going to close at. It's, it's going to close around about 483 million profitability. If you say it's a bit of a lower end of guidance after today, you know, it's going to be about 460 million in profitability. It's still like double the profitability in like four years. You look at the balance sheet here, cracking balance sheet, a um, little bit of debt on there with an acquisition they made, uh, but it's still, you know, 31% debt to equity. They've still got um, nearly 946 million of cash. Look at insiders, you know, insiders were buying the shares at these levels at £1.09 pence. You know, you had like the likes of the um, chairman of the board, you had the CEO buying some shares during this time frame. So even they were buying shares at one pound and, and now now the stock has actually, you know, fallen even below where they were doing their insider buying. So I just look at the stock here and I'm like, yeah, it wasn't a great update today. Put it into context, this stock is dirt cheap. <laughs> you know, seven times forward earnings or nine times earnings for you know, this company here, they're growing a lot faster than any, any of the peers during this time frame, Foot Locker, Nike, and what have you. Great balance sheet here. It just doesn't make sense. I don't know why there's so much fear today. I don't know why the stock even dropped 15% today. It just doesn't make sense. I, I think, ultimately, I think the reason why, and I think the hint here is that the stock has been falling for the last kind of few months, is that, 
UK UK stocks are just in a slump at the moment. Unfortunately, I think we've got an in, inadequate government at the moment. They're making a lot of poor decisions. And I think that's probably why the stock is going down more than anything. And it's probably worth a video on at some point, again, about how currently we have a UK government that's currently wrecking the UK economy, UK businesses, UK stock market. And, and that's probably the reason why it's going down. So we'll see what happens in the long term. But right now, I look at this stock here and I think it shouldn't be down at these sort of levels. Hey, you know, when you look at the valuation of how quality this business is and how good it's performed in the last few years, and it looks to continue only, you know, doing that in the next kind of, you know, all time. I mean, look at how much it's up. All time is up 3,114%. Yeah, I think that this was a, a stupid job. So, um, yeah, I don't think it should have uh, gone down as much as what it did today as well, because I thought the update was actually, yeah, it wasn't great, but it's definitely not a 15% drop, and uh, it shouldn't be down, um, what's it down, 40% year today? It should be down 5% year today, let's put it that way. So, yeah, I just, it's crazy. I, I gotta say, one thing that I do think is that when the stock was £1.50, I don't believe I sold any of my shares out. I probably should have done that. That's something that I haven't, I've actually noticed the other day. But apart from that, yeah, I don't think the stock should be here. You know, this this stock should be a, it should go back up to a £1.30 stock at least, I think, from here. So, yeah, um, I'll say that on that one. And then Jet2, Jet2 had a really good day. Stock was up 5%. It was actually up a lot more than 5%, but then it kind of gave some of it back during the day. It was up like eight or nine percent during the day, and J and Jet 2's earnings were absolutely fantastic. As you can see, Jet 2 shares saw after record half year revenue, and I love Jet 2. It's a great company. It's a really good company. I hate airline stocks. <laughs> I don't like them. I never invest in them. Jet 2 is the only one I will ever invest in, and I have done ever since I bought back during the COVID times when the stock was all the way down at five pound. Um, since then, the stock is up over 166 percent. But I've continued to average up on the position, so I've made it larger um, and made more money from that. And um, yeah, I, I think Jet 2 is a really good airline stock. It's the only one that I argue the case. You know, it was only a while ago someone else was talking about airline stocks. I said, I just, you know, I don't touch them. The only one I touch is Jet 2. I think it was for playing footsie guys when they're on about Ryanair. And um, I think they were on about moats. And um, I said, oh, I won't touch Ryanair because it hasn't got a moat. I would argue the case that Jet 2 is the only one that has a moat in the, the airline industry. And, and it's clear from these results today, like the, the moat is kind of being shown there where people choose to fly with Jet 2 over other companies because they, they have the best experience. They have the less delays. They just seem more organized. The price is a lot more um, better for you as well. And that was clear in the, the results today. You know, we uh, I think it was Jet 2 at the time said, oh, we're seeing slower summer booking. And we were like, oh, can we trust them about that? Um, I remember making a video like, I hope I hope they're telling the truth. And clearly that was the case because clearly the bookings came in because the financials have you know, absolutely exploded. And I think it was Ryanair at the time that came in and said, oh, it's getting a little bit weak out there. Maybe it's later bookings. And then they came, I went, no, profit warning. But Jet2 obviously yeah, delivering the goods once again. And, you know, you look at these numbers here, you know, revenue was up 15%, operating profit up 14%, profit before FX up 16%, profit before tax up 20%, profit for the period uh, up 20%, uh, EPS up 21%, interim dividend up 10%, all the numbers that you would like to see from a business. But it gets better from there. This is the winter bookings as well. It's currently 14% higher. Sorry, the sales seat capacity is currently 14% higher at the moment. So potentially they can make even more money over the winter period. They said that they also are on track to deliver group profit and on track to deliver group profit before, uh, ahead of expectations, which is what you want to see as well. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of upgrades going on. And also they said that they are preparing to have higher capacity for summer 2025 uh, of higher than uh, 9% as well, which is really good to see. And you look at the company here, you know, you're, you're picking this company at eight times earnings. And airlines normally do trade at lower multiples because they're not very exciting businesses. They don't normally have much growth here. But I give a case, you know, you look at Jet2 at eight times earnings and you think, you're looking at the numbers and, you know, that, to be fair, I, I should really do it off a forward, uh, a forward P as well because if the EPS is growing at 21%, this forward P is gonna be like six times earnings, maybe. And uh, you know, six times forward earnings for a company that's you know doing these numbers here. These are like growth company numbers, aren't they? So, you know, maybe if uh, you know, these companies normally trade at like eight, nine times earnings, maybe this is a case where this one actually should be probably a little bit higher than these guys because this is the, the top dog. You know, the top dog deserves a premium, and I'd argue the case that you know Jet 2 should be maybe a bit of a premium than this. And I look at these numbers today, and you know, it, it makes me laugh because Jet 2 actually come out and say like we're ahead of expectations. And, and yet the stock is only rewarded with a 5% jump. I mean, it was up a little bit more, but it's given a, a, you know, a fair bit of it away, away uh, during the day. You know, up 5%. And then look at JD's earnings. And I was like, yeah, JD's earnings, like they were okay. They weren't as good as what was expected. But 
but they're still in the guidance, but yet the stock on JD falls 15%. So you've got one company that's still in the guidance that did okay earnings, but yet they're punished with a 15% drop. And then you have JD uh, Jet2 that actually come out with like good earnings, profit ahead of expectations, ahead of guidance, and yet the stock only gets a 5% jump on the day. It, it does show you, it does show you like the difference between like fear and greed. It does show you the difference, like greed, you know, or stocks in general, like sometimes the market can be a little bit sleepy all over them, but as soon as something goes wrong with a stock or something's not as good as what's expected, boom, stock falls massively, fear takes over. And without doubt, there's a few people in there that's probably panic sold on today's numbers and seeing, you know, JD Sports dropping. And it just shows you like, it just piles up and uh, people just panic and sell all the shares. And yeah, a very big mix today because I look at these companies and I go, Jet2 should have been up more, <laughs> after their really good earnings and then looking at JD Sports and they're down way more I, I just said JD Sports should have been down about 5% today and then we got stock down 15% um, and, and also that's not considering the value it's at and how much it actually dropped even pre-earnings as well you know argue the case that maybe it shouldn't have even dropped maybe it should have all been priced in during that time frame and um, the fact that we're down this is down 40% year to date it's just uh, you know I know we've gone from Jet2 speaking Speak about J JD Sports again, but the fact we, you know, we the financials are going to move up in that direction, um, and yet the stock isn't getting it priced in at all. It's just I, I don't know. It's weird. Stock market's weird. The UK market's weird at the moment. The UK economy's weird. Uh, the UK government's weird at the moment. There's a there's a lot of weird things going on, on the UK side of it. But I think that you know th these are the days where I look at some of the US stocks and I go, I'm glad I've got 75% of my wealth in the US market. And I just keep looking at SoFi going, oh, that's that's <laughs> that's going to keep me a lot more happy with what's going on in the UK market because it's been a weird moment for the UK market in these last kind of couple of weeks. And today I think just kind of topped it off anyway. But yeah, I think if you can look back, look past the uncertainty of some of the people that are in power at the moment in the UK side of it, I think there's, you know, some quality businesses that hopefully, you know, weather the storm and, and, and power through it. And um, hopefully as well, you know, some of these companies have international expansion as well. And, and maybe those markets do really well for them as well. So yeah, um, that's the stock for today, guys. Uh, the video for today anyway, not the stock. I did it, I did it again. I keep saying stock. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Hit the like button. If you want to join the private group, make sure you email, email me on jkrinvesting at gmail.com. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you in a bit.